breaths were held in the jungle of French Guiana on the 9th of July, while the countdown of the first ever Ariane 6 reached top and the rocket left its launch pad with a thunderous rumble. A historic event for the European Space Agency, ESA, and the highlight of 2024. Yet it was but one among many other achievements in 2024. Ariane 6's inaugural flight ensures Europe's independent access to space. This new heavy lift rocket offers more flexibility than its predecessor and provides the same reliability that all Ariane launches are known for. Its first flight delivered a selection of experiments, satellites and payloads into space. But mostly, it showcased liftoff to orbit for a completely new rocket. This launch marks the start of the age of Ariane 6. In a fitting farewell, 2024 also witnessed the last launch of Vega, the first version of Europe's lightweight launcher. For its last mission, Vega carried Sentinel-2C into orbit. However, this last Vega mission is only the end of the beginning, as its legacy continues with Vega-C. This more powerful, upgraded Vega launcher returned to flight with the launch of Sentinel-1C in December. With the last Vega carrying Sentinel-2C and Vega-C bringing Sentinel-1C to orbit, two more satellites joined Europe's Copernicus constellation in what is the largest Earth observation program in the world. In 2024, we finalized agreements with the European Commission and industry consortium SpaceRise for IRIS-2, a multi-orbit constellation of over 280 satellites that will deliver resilient, secure and fast communications for the EU. From one European constellation to another, 2024 was an important year for Europe's Galileo constellation, which continued to expand with the launch of four new satellites. The addition of these satellites increased the system's reliability, robustness and precision, enhancing global navigation services for billions of users. On Earth, an updated Galileo ground system was rolled out to enhance support for the ever-growing constellation, add extra security features and enable the Galileo second-generation satellites to be flown. This second generation of Galileo satellites is now in production and will consist of two different satellite families. In June, both satellite designs were reviewed and found to meet all requirements, marking another step towards the second generation of the most precise, publicly owned satellite navigation system in the world. Far away, deep in our solar system, the ESA JAXA Bepi Colombo spacecraft performed two breathtaking Mercury flybys in 2024. Bepi Colombo sent back its best images yet, and they were stunning. These flybys are needed to slow the spacecraft down for it to enter orbit around Mercury in 2026. JUICE is another epic deep space mission and it, too, performed a crucial gravity assist, this time becoming the first spacecraft ever to conduct a Moon-Earth double flyby on its way to Jupiter. Now, JUICE is en route to Venus, taking a shortcut through our solar system and bringing the spacecraft one step closer to exploring Jupiter's icy moons. It's been 20 years since ESA's comet chaser Rosetta was launched and 10 years since its historic arrival at the comet 67P Churyumov gerasimenko This year, ESA once again launched a spacecraft to a small body, this time with the HERA mission going after an asteroid. The spacecraft is on track to investigate asteroid Dimorphos following the earlier impact of NASA's DART mission both part of a crucial planetary defense effort. As HERA departed home, it took one last look at the planet it is meant to protect. Meanwhile, 
ESA is already developing the Ramses mission to rendezvous with the asteroid Apophis and follow it during its exceptionally close flyby of Earth in 2029. Also in development is Comet Interceptor, the first mission to visit a comet coming directly from the outer reaches of the solar system, carrying material untouched since the dawn of the solar system. It's only been a year since Euclid has been launched, and already the Space Telescope has released stunning images of the stars and galaxies it will study to investigate dark matter. The released mosaic of 208 gigapixels contains around 100 million sources, stars in our Milky Way and galaxies beyond, revealing vast cosmic structures that challenge our understanding of dark matter and dark energy the most enigmatic aspects of our current cosmological understanding. Twenty twenty four saw the launch of ESA's Proba three mission to the Sun. Proba three consists of two precision formation flying satellites, the first in the world, and will demonstrate formation flying in the context of a large scale science experiment. Together, the satellites will form a 144-meter-long solar coronagraph, allowing thousands of hours of artificial solar eclipses to study the sun's faint corona. From the depths of space to closer to home, launched in 2024, EarthCare began transmitting its first atmospheric images and data, offering new insights into the complex interaction between clouds, aerosols, and radiation in the atmosphere and our planet's climate. And the same goes for ESA's Arctic Weather Satellite, which was also launched this year and started providing images after only one month in orbit. Despite its name, the Arctic Weather Satellite measures temperature and humidity at various altitudes across the world, but its humidity data is particularly valuable for Arctic weather prediction. Both missions reinforce ESA's dedication to Earth observation helping us monitor environmental changes from above. But ESA cares not only about the environment on Earth, but also in space. With its zero-debris approach, it aims to leave nothing behind when spacecraft missions end. This year, both clusters Salsa spacecraft and ERS-2 made re-entries into Earth's atmosphere, breaking up as they did to keep space clean. The Zero Debris Charter already received over a hundred signatures, including countries such as Mexico and New Zealand. In human spaceflight, Europe continues to contribute to science from the ISS, as Andreas Mogensen's Hugin mission continued well into 2024. Andreas even met up in space with ESA project astronaut Marcus Wandt, who was launched on his Munin mission making it the first time two Scandinavians were in space together. While Marcus went to space for 18 days on the first all-European commercial astronaut mission to the ISS for Axiom, Andreas returned in March after 199 days in space. Meanwhile, the latest class of ESA astronauts have completed basic training and graduated in April. A milestone for ESA's future astronauts, with two of them, Sophie and Raphael, already assigned for long-duration missions to the ISS in 2026. And the astronaut corps keeps expanding, with the first half of ESA's astronaut reserve starting their first training program at the European Astronaut Centre in Cologne, covering key modules of basic astronaut training. Also in Cologne, ESA inaugurated its newest training complex, the Lunar Facility, with DLR. Lunar is a pioneering lunar training site, simulating moon-like conditions to prepare astronauts for future lunar mission. This state-of-the-art facility will greatly enhance ESA's capabilities in training its astronauts. And lift off of Artemis 1. To get to the moon, ESA is a partner in the Artemis program, providing the European Service Module the powerhouse for NASA's Orion spacecraft. This year, a third ESM has been shipped to the US for integration. Europe is also contributing to the International Lunar Gateway and developing its own lunar lander called Argonaut, 
in line with tradition to name lunar mission after Greek mythology. These Argonaut landers will also be using ESA moonlight navigation and telecommunication capabilities around the moon. Moonlight is still in full development and will allow for fast communication with the Gateway and Earth to return scientific and operational data, as well as location fixes for automated landings. All crucial steps for Europe in gaining access to the Moon. As 2024 draws to a close, it is clear to see that ESA's achievements this year have reinforced Europe's role in space. With eyes set on future missions and innovations, ESA's journey continues into new frontiers, shaping the space landscape for generations to come.